Hello, I'm Nicholas Armstrong Smith from Century 21 Armstrong Smith. Today I'm here with Bob Zeldin from Zeldin Solicitors. We're going to have a general conversation about law and real estate and how we work so well together. Um, I've known Bob for a number of years and um, we've um, been involved um, with each other on many transactions. Um, Bob, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, yes, uh, I started practicing law in 1996 and opened my own firm here in Bono Junction 2001. I cater to many areas of the law, including conveyancing, uh, litigation, estate management, probate, and so on and so forth. Very good. You've, um, you've been very active. 1996 is a long time. Well, I finished right. school in 1999, <laughs> so there you go, Bob. There you go. So a client, should a buyer, um, a property, um, someone looking for a property, should they buy first or should they sell first, in your opinion? What do you think, Bob? Well, it's a very interesting question. The way I view it is this. If the potential purchaser or vendor seller has enough money to buy their property without the need to have money from the sale, then sure, they can do whatever they want. They can purchase before they sell. Remember, they do have to have additional costs. I mean, there are additional um, sums of money they have to have. I do legal fees, agent exactly right. fees. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but Generally speaking, most people are not in that position. Most people really do need to sell before they buy. Yeah. Um, they, by selling first, they know exactly how much money they will have to purchase their property yeah. from the sale. Yeah. I mean, settlement can take place at the same time. The sale can occur at the same time as the purchase. Yeah. That happens a lot. Yeah. But uh, when you sell first, it is so much easier because the, the, when, they, when it's time to buy, they, these purchasers will know exactly how much they have. Yeah. They don't have to worry. The problem is if you purchase first, even with an extended settlement period, it forces the, the vendor or the seller to accept a price possibly far below what they want because they get desperate. This is the situation that you want to try and avoid. I always say, I, I joke, you know, there's no point going to David Jones and uh, trying to buy a pair of shoes if you don't have the money to do so, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's the same with this and, um, you know, just have your duck, ducks aligned before you go shopping. That's exactly that. right. Probably That's exactly throughout right. lease and so That's exactly right. And Bob, when, which, when should a potential seller or buyer um, introduce themselves to you and start, uh, start a conversation? Well, I actually think they should do so immediately before they do anything. First of all, they speak to me, we see if we can communicate well together, we can get along with each other, they can ask me any questions they have before they go out onto the market and look for something or are thinking of selling. They know exactly what they're getting in for. So it, it, the sooner they do this, the sooner they approach a lawyer, the better it is for them. Yeah. Approach a lawyer, get your finance sorted, get your ducks aligned, ready to purchase. I've yeah. had a situation in the past where a uh, prospective purchaser says, oh, we just bought a property uh, we, at the auction. Uh, here is the contract. And then I look at the contract, oh my gosh, um, there are so many problems. But unfortunately, in that situation, the lawyer can only do so much. Because they've already signed. That's exactly right. If, if they come and talk to me in advance, so for example, in relation to a sale, okay, if it's a straight sale, if it's not an auction, I would say let the prospective purchaser make an offer. If the offer is accepted, then they can provide the contract to the lawyer to have a look through the contract and make the necessary amendments. Remember, an offer at the end of the day doesn't mean much, even if it's accepted. If, however, you sign the contract and you provide money, then it's a bit late. Don't do that. You can make the offer, then go to a lawyer, have a chat to the lawyer. If the lawyer approves the contract, go for it, sign whatever you want, provided all your other uh, eggs are in the basket, basically. Yeah. Um, at the, with an auction, I suggest show the lawyer the contract at least one or two weeks prior. Let him review the contract to make sure it's suitable for the prospective yeah. purchaser. Good and advice. move forward after that. Yeah, yeah. good advice. Um, Bob, are there additional costs um, associated with the um, with the purchase, apart from just the money that they're um, spending on, um, on, on that home purchase? Yes, there are a, a lot of additional costs and one must take all of these into account. 
We want to make sure that the purchaser has enough money to complete the purchase. Mm -hmm. It's very important. The biggest cost is stand duty. Mm -hmm. And again, it depends on stand duty. The amount of the stand duty depends on whether you're an Australian citizen, you're a permanent resident. Sometimes permanent residents have to pay more stand duty than Australian citizens as well. Foreigners pay significantly more. Yeah. They also need approval from um, the Cornwall government to purchase yeah. in any event. But for the general Australian citizen or per a certain permanent residents, in addition to stamp duty, you also have to pay council rates until the 30th of June the following year, your strata levies and your water rates until the end of whatever quarter we're in. You've also got government registration fees. Yeah. You've got PEXA fees, which is the electronic network. All conveyancing has to be done through the electronic network these days. Yeah. And there are a number of other fees. Also, obviously, legal fees and disbursements. Yeah. So just make sure, I, I, again, I would advise that this prospective purchaser speaks to a lawyer before they sign anything, before they do anything, talk about these additional costs, make sure you've got enough money, yeah. and then we can move forward. Yeah. Question I get quite a lot is um, during deceased estates and um, when can a when can a family member or the person that's um, acting for the estate when can they put the property on the market um, once a person's um, once a person's deceased um, and how does that process work? Okay, so it's an interesting question. Let's go one step back. What is a will? That's the first question we have to ask. Mm -hmm. A will expresses the testamentary intentions or in lay person's terms what the, the deceased person Wishes. wants to happen with their assets when they die mm -hmm. now when a person dies the will uh, the executor the person who's responsible for taking action in accordance with the um, deceased person's wishes in a very very simple term when can this executor do something well, then the next question is, what is the definition of probate? In very simple terms, probate, the definition of probate is permission from the Supreme Court to use the will in the way it should be used. In mm -hmm. other words, to, to do what the um, deceased person wishes. Yeah. So it's permission to use the will. Now, until you get probate, the executor has no permission to do what the will says. Mm -hmm. So, can this executor sell the deceased person's property to satisfy the wishes of the deceased pursuant to the will? The answer is no, until such time as probate is granted. Mm -hmm. When probate is granted, the property can then be sold. Uh, first step is the property is transferred into the name of the executor mm -hmm. and then sold. Mm -hmm. So. Although technically you can put the property on the market, subject to probate. Subject, yes, you can put the property on the market, but it is the contract must say subject to probate being granted. Mm. And once probate is granted, sure, the executive can do whatever it chooses, mm. or in accordance with the will. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, we do have some sales where they're uh, subject to probate, and um, others do wait for probate to go through to. Um, to, to before oh, commence it, usually before waiting for, usually, or usually yeah. waiting for probate is a better option because you don't know. Sometimes it takes extensive periods of time yeah. for probate to be granted, depending on the complexity of the yeah. estate. Yeah. So it, it really depends. But yes, you can do both ways. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting, isn't it? There's mm -hmm. uh, so many parts to real estate and 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 law. And um, it's really important to have someone really good on your side, like Bob, um, that can help you through the whole, um, the whole purchasing, selling um, transaction. And of course, um, when it comes to real estate, we're more than happy to assist. Um, thank you so much, Bob. Thank we you so much for having me. I appreciate it. No Any worries. other questions? Don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. No problem. Take care. Thank you.